okay uh, good afternoon uh, in the previous lecture uh, 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 we were discussing about the geolocation of laser footprint okay so so all of you are already aware about the meaning of geolocation of laser footprint so uh, uh briefly i would like to uh, define it again when we perform the laser scanning from the moving platform so with laser scanner unit we have positioning and orientation system okay and this pos unit is a combination of gnss and imu just see we have a three sensors over here and each sensor has each sensor has its own coordinate system okay so let's say uh, the raw measurement which we collect it is in laser scanner coordinate system initially okay so if i uh, draw the so this this box indicate uh, let's say it's a representation of laser scanner coordinate system so we define it with respect to the laser scanner unit okay so let's say this x y and z so when you is initialize the instrument what it does laser scanner fires the laser beam let's say somewhere we have a target point p and when we operate laser scanner unit from the moving platform it's a 2d laser scanner okay so in 2d laser scanners the raw information which is recorded it is range as well as scale angle alpha fine in geolocation of laser footprint what we do let's say somewhere on the surface of earth we have this target point p okay and uh, uh, just over this point to the airborne laser scanning uh, this point aim is to measure the coordinate of this point okay so somewhere here we have a laser scanner unit so this range as well as alpha is recorded in the laser scanner coordinate system somewhere here we have defined laser scanner coordinate system okay then with this uh, lidar system we also have a integrated positioning and orientation system so our aim in geolocation is to transform this vector that connect origin of laser scanner coordinate system to target point p from instrument reference system instrument over here is laser scanner so from the instrument reference system to a global coordinate system uh, that is we define this x axis y axis and z axis okay so in geolocation what we do we rotate and translate multiple times this vector vector that connect origin of laser scanner coordinate system to point p to convert it into this vector because see this vector talks about coordinate of this point p in x y z coordinate system that is the gnss coordinate system we also call it ecef okay ecef stands for earth will define i hope all of you are aware about this coordinate system earth centered earth fixed
coordinate system okay so this process is called a geolocation of laser footprint so to understand this concept in the previous lecture we discussed about from coordinate geometry and vector algebra concept like when we want to transform a vector from one coordinate system to another coordinate system then what we need to do okay so if you recall then i told you to derive the rotation matrices considering rotation about uh, x axis y axis and z axis like one case that i discuss in two dimension we have a xy coordinate system okay and uh this is point p so this is op vector what we do the z axis is coming out of this screen so if you write you apply right hand thumb rule applying right hand if you have right right head thumb rule and compute z axis direction then it is called as right handed coordinate system right handed coordinate system okay so what happened when you rotate it let's say by angle theta then it is x new and this is y new and uh, uh, rotation is provided by angle theta in anti clockwise I hope you can see the shared screen. Yes. Yes. Fine. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, uh, rotate it anti-clockwise by angle theta. Now, uh, uh, if we represent this uh, vector OP over here, so this vector OP can be represented in the form of, let's say. a uh, row matrix a row vector you can say so it's x1 y1 this is the coordinate and it is in it is in xy coordinate system convert it in x and y in coordinate system what we need to do now we have a vector op new and the coordinate is x1 n and y n n theta is known it is an angle how you calculate this vector x1 n and y n n are op n vector and op vector we have already derived the rotation matrix what it is if i write it x1 n is the component of point p1 uh, let's say p i talk about over here so x1 n is the coordinate of point 
projection of point P on X and axis, okay? While Y, one N is on Y axis. Now it is equal to X1, comma Yn. You need to multiply it by rotation about Z axis. Now this rotation about Z axis is two cross two matrix. So it's one cross two, multiply it by two cross two. You will get a resultant vector and it is again one cross two. Now tell me what is Rz? क्या डिराइव किया था हमने उस दिन सर कॉस थीटा एक मिनट वेट सो आरजेड इज टू कॉस टू मैट्रिक्स व्हाट इज योर फर्स्ट रो कॉस थीटा cos theta and sin theta cos theta and sin theta fine then and minus then sin minus minus sin theta and then cos theta correct and cos theta yes sir okay uh, thank you so i hope in a similar way as i told in the last lecture you have derived it this the rotation about y in the same fashion anti clockwise theta see uh, the convention uh, the way you rotate the axis matters okay so uh, anti clockwise theta then theta is taken positive over here if let's say rotation is in clockwise fashion then this theta will be replaced by minus theta okay so anti clockwise fashion uh, in anti clockwise rotation is considered as positive theta okay so minus theta when rotation is clockwise okay so uh, what we write over here now it can be written as just multiply it it is cos theta sin theta and the second row is minus sin theta and cos theta okay now can we convert this analysis into 3d think about it and let me know can this analysis be converted into 3d 3d ka meaning yahan pe ye hota hai ki uh, now this vector p is in 3d and we, you need to include one more Uh, projection that is on Z1, that is on Z axis. Okay, and now it is in X, Y, and Z coordinate system. Okay, and now convert it into X n, Y n, and Z n coordinate system. other uh, this the process we adopt again it is rotated about z axis in anti clockwise fashion by angle theta but analysis is in 3d where the vector uh, connect point p from the origin it is calculated in 3d and it's uh, the coordinate comes out to be x1 comma y1 comma z1 
it can be represented in a, a row vector okay now what it will be over here what kind of change you can notice in that case now in three dimensional you are going to uh, uh, calculate a coordinate from uh, uh, its original coordinate system you are going to transform it in a new coordinate system so in that case it will be x1 y1 and z1 so x1 y1 z1 this is the coordinate in x y z coordinate system you want to convert it into the uh, derive this the second coordinate system that we obtain by rotating the original coordinate system anti clockwise direction by angle theta so it's uh, x in 1 y in 1 and z in 1 what kind of change you can see over here okay uh, in this case uh, where we say okay we are rotating the xy coordinate system this xy coordinate system anti clockwise by angle theta about z axis can you notice the change in z axis and z n axis when you rotate xy xyz coordinate system about its z axis anti clockwise by angle theta can you notice any change in z axis and z n axis are they same or is there any difference same sir same sir they are same only difference you can see orientation in uh, x axis and y axis okay now they are changed to the new direction xn and yn okay if there is no change in z it means uh, you can say that this z1 is equal to z1n am i correct if there is no change it means the projection on z axis either in xy coordinate system or x and y n coordinate system will be same because even after the rotation we can write it after the rotation about z axis the z axis and z n axis is still overlap means they are same if they are same this holds true so z1 is equal to z1n what kind of change you need to implement in this matrix so that this equation can also be included in this format Because see, uh, in two dimensions, the x n y n is equal to x n y n, and multiplication of this two D matrix. What from where we have get, uh, uh, we have got this equation? By uh, this is a simplified version of two equations we have generated, if you remember. So this is the matrix version, matrix in the form of like matrix mul mul multiplication. this is the simplified version of those two equations now this is the third equation which we are uh, we we obtain okay when we do the analysis in three dimension if you want to incorporate this equation as well over here then what kind of change you need to incorporate in this matrix 
Then we can have uh, one one on third column. Yeah. Uh, uh, who is speaking? Uh, Sumit and uh, and Dusa. Who is it? Alok. Alok. Ha, yes, sir. Uh, three, three under three. I have one down. Let's say, and the rest I have zero down. Let's say, then it will be. Correct. हम क्या करेंगे कि इस मैट्रिक्स में विल ऐड वन मोर रो एंड वन मोर कॉलम ओके सो नाउ इट बिकम थ्री क्रॉस थ्री मैट्रिक्स इंस्टेड ऑफ टू क्रॉस थ्री सो व्हाट वी कैन मॉडिफाई these two are same okay so what we do the first row it comes out to be cos theta sin theta okay now minus sin theta and Cos theta. Just see when you are going to obtain x n one. So in x n one, there is only component of x one and y one. It means there is no z component, so you need to write zero zero. Similarly over here, no z component, you need to write zero zero. Z n one is equal to z one, so it is one. Okay. So we have derived rotation matrix in three D. It's three cross three mat. Okay. Similarly, so we can write it. This is a rotation about z axis by angle theta, and it is in anti-clockwise. Similarly, you can derive a uh, rotation matrix equation in three-dimensional. when uh, for rotation about x axis theta and rotation about y axis by theta okay so one type of uh, change in the coordinate system we have analyzed that is only change by rotating the two axes either x y y z or z x by rotating about the third axis there are many other types of changes as well the second kind of change that we notice is the no change in orientation but change in location of origin so the second course uh, case we are going to see over here have you noted down this because i am going to erase this if you want to note it uh, i am giving you 5 minutes time and let me know when uh, when you have completed
Okay, so I hope uh, you have noted it. So the second case we discuss. Uh, in the second case, we'll see if we, uh, there is no change in the direction of axis. But change is there only in terms of shift of origin. This will be the second case. Then we'll discuss the third case where uh, we can see the changes in direction of axis as well as the change in shift in origin. So the second case. The change in coordinate system. Due to. Shift in origin only. So first we'll start in 2D and we'll see it in further 3D, okay? So this is XY coordinate system. Now there is change in origin and we have XN, YN coordinate system, okay? So this origin is O and it is O. So this vector OP, okay, again this vector OP is written in 2D by X1, Y1, okay. Now when it is changed, the coordinate system XY, XY coordinate system, change to xn yn coordinate system then what is new op n vector that is equal to xn comma yn that is new coordinate and we can say new projection of point P on Xn and Yn axis to get its coordinate. So from uh, this vector algebra concept, you need to measure this vector. Okay. So this ONP vector gives you this Xn, Yn and this OP vector gives you this. Okay. So if you see over here, then if you, you project it, so this is X1. Okay. And if you want to get Xn, Xn is equal to X1 plus, see, the direction of Y axis is Y and y, Yn. You can see Y is parallel to Yn and X is parallel to Xn. As I discussed before, in this case, there is no change in direction of axis, only change is there in terms of shift of origin from location O to new position ON. Okay, so Xn can be written as X1 plus shift in origin in X. If we write it, it is DX. If you measure the shift and if it is taken as DX, so shift in the origin uh, location, if it is measured along x axis, so it is over here dx. 
similarly yn it means you project it on y axis so this length is what is this length o on y axis in xy coordinate system what will be this length who will tell me sir op sin theta op sin theta kahan se aayega yahan pe sir y op will consider it it's y1 if the coordinate of this it is x1 and y1 and the way i have written the projection of x axis it's x1 what is x1 y1 it's a projection of vector op on x axis and y axis i have discussed it many times then y1 the this this length what it is it's projection of vector op on y axis see if theta is given then it is fine it's op theta it is not given what value i have given it's x1 and y1 directly the projection value is given okay so uh, it will be y1 okay now yn what it will be see it is shifted upward direction so this length is also given that is dy okay so y1 yn will be equal to so write it to y1n so y1n will be equal to y1 that is this length this length will propagate as it is so this is so if it is in upward direction see so in that case y1 minus dx sorry dy is it clear because this entire length is y1 okay and in the shift see the shift meaning is that the vector o o n this vector o o n is given by dx comma dy okay and if you try to understand from the vector algebra concept then o n p vector that is o n p vector okay so this o n p vector is equal to this vector plus this so it will be equal to o n o vector plus o p vector okay so this is a particular case but in generalized case we consider dx and dy positive okay so consider dx and dy positive the way it is shifted in that case the sign can be introduced so in that case we can write it i'm not considering the sign in dx and dy as a general case x1 n can be written as x1 plus delta x this dx could be minus dx or plus dx and y1 n is equal to y1 plus dy okay now can you write it in terms of matrix again x and y1n okay 
it is equal to x1 y1 can we write it in a matrix form these two equations can be written in the matrix form x1 n y1 n x1 y1 it's a 1 cross 2 matrix is 2 cross 1 matrix so how you do the multiplication this row and to get equation 1 okay this row to get equation 2 What should be the entries over here? X1 n is equal to multiply this. So 1 comma 0, 0 comma 1. 1 comma 0. Or 0 or second row is 0 or 1. मैट्रिक्स के फॉर्म में लिख पाएंगे हम तो सर ये डीएक्स वाली अलग मैट्रिक्स एडिशन होगा ना उसका बाद में फर्स्ट यू नीड टू इंश्योर दैट कैन वी राइट इट इनटू टू क्रॉस टू मैट्रिक्स फॉर्मेट आर नॉट Sir, two, sir, first matrix is of 1 cross 2, that x1, y1, and second matrix we can use of 2 by 2 matrix 1, 0, 0, 1, and next add, additive with the uh, dx, dy, dx minus dy matrix of 1 by 1 cross 2. Mm Do it and let me know. Five minutes time I am giving to you. Solve it and let me know. Everything I have discussed over here. Just you need to convert it into the matrix form. First just see is there a possibility to do it using 2 cross 2 matrix. Or we need to go with the 3 cross 3. 1 cross 3 like that. You can even expand it. You can make it one cross three. Then you, in that case, you need to think what, what should be the third element. We can make it three cross three. It is done like that. Now think in that way. What element we need to put at the third? Uh, this uh, in case of this, the third element, and similarly in this case also the third element.
Sir, if three by three matrix, if we take, we can uh, take as first column one zero dx, second column zero one minus dy, and third column zeros. Yeah, we'll see. So in that case, what we will do? Okay. X one uh, will introduce one more equation over here. What is that equation? X one n is equal to x one plus t x. It is already there. Second one is y n one is equal to y one plus t y. And third equation is one is equal to one. Okay, now we'll see. When we have a three equation, it means one plus zero. What we have? We have a three element. Here also we have a three element, and we have a three element. Fine. Now see. Convert it to it into the row vector. So it's x one n. Okay. Y one n and one. Now again, its row vector is equal to x one, y one and one now we have three cross three matrix okay so to get this what you need to do this entire multiplied with this okay so this vector is multiplied with this Get this. I will see how you will get x one n equation is this. Okay, so x one we have a x one. So at position of x one, it should be one. Okay. Now what we have at this position, we have d x. Okay, so no value at y one position. It comes out to be zero. Zero. Okay, now at position one, it's dx. Now see. If you multiply this into this, what you will get? You will get this value. And it is given over here. Check it. So x one at y position we don't have any value. X one coefficient is one. Y position no. It's zero and dx. It's one. Similarly, you can write in y one n we don't have a value. It's zero at x. Y we have a coefficient one. It's one. Okay. And now we have a dy, so dy comes out to be here. Now last one is equal to one. So no component for x one, it's zero. Again, no component for y one, it's zero. And last one, it means one is equal to one. I hope now it is clear. Green Kumar, unmute. Yes, sir. Uh, is it clear now? Yes, sir. Clear. 
चलो ठीक गुड सो आई होप इट इज क्लियर टू यू नाउ द थर्ड केस the third case is when we can see both rotation and translation when we have both when we need to apply both rotation and translation salja could you please unmute yes sir now uh, when we need to apply both rotation and translation if this is the case of translation we have discussed so it's not rotation we call it translation matrix okay okay why we caught uh, please mute so this is called so translation matrix it is generated so what we need to do uh in the first and second case in the first case we have seen that um the op vector nu is equal to op vector multiplied by r इधर अबाउट एक्स एक्सिस वाई एक्सिस और जेड एक्सिस बाय एंगल थीटा इस फर्स्ट वी हैव डिस्कस ओके केस सेकंड दिस न्यू वेक्टर ओरिजिनल वेक्टर नाउ इट इज मल्टीप्लाइड बाय ट्रांसलेशन मैट्रिक्स टी एंड वी हैव अ डीएक्स कॉमा dy in 2d case second and this is for 2d analysis now for 3d opn is equal to op vector translation we have a dx comma dy comma dz okay again this is second case for 3d this third case i would like to highlight over here in that case what will happen instead of a uh, 3 cross 3 it will be 4 cross 4 uh because dx is also uh, also included so why it is 4 cross 4 because in that case y and z one n will come over here in that case you will write x one n y one n and z one n one this is equal to again we have a row vector x one y one z one and one this will be four cross four matrix where diagonal element 1 1 1 again one over here this is dx dy and dz the rest of the element zero fine now these two are the second case and first case in the third case what we'll have in the third case coordinate system changes by both rotation and translation before discussing this part uh, that i will continue from next lecture onward uh what we should do first first rotate it or translate it 
just see over here the analysis we have adopted okay for the translation by seeing that analysis what we should do first first rotation or translation first we do the rotation then only we can do this such kind of addition okay it means if let's say some coordinate system is given over here like this so you need to first rotate it so that this x y axis match with y n and x n axis then only we can go with translation so first rotate then then the translation formula is valid then translate this is the procedure we adopt 